And joining us now, Queen Noor of Jordan, the widow of the late King Hussein. Uh, she's here in Washington. These pictures that we're seeing, uh, Your Majesty, they're devastating. And I know you are deeply, deeply concerned about this humanitarian crisis that has erupted in Gaza. Well, it's been a humanitarian catastrophe, um, according to the UN and, and, and others now, for years. And in particularly during the last 18 uh, months of, of, of the near total blockade, you have 80% of the people of Gaza, before this military action began, living on aid, living on food aid, 50% unemployed. Uh, half the population are children. When a military operation like this takes place, um, and it, it is impossible to, to avoid civilian so casualties. Who you, and there are blame, enormous who blame, number of Who do you blame civilians. for this? Well, let me, uh, may I refer to something the Major said earlier, yes. which was um, the, they want to restore the sense of peace and security for the Israeli population. Well, the sense of peace and security um, of, of the p people of Gaza is something that hasn't, they haven't known for an extraordinarily long period of time. They're living in a virtual prison. Not only before the blockade began 18 months ago, Gaza was a virtual prison. Israel is in occupation of Gaza. They left, their forces left until today, but they control the air, land, sea routes, in and out. They control electricity, gas, water. They control every aspect virtually of the lives of the people of Gaza. They have no economic uh, life, they have um, no, no choices of, of access um, or um, um, travel inside the Egyptians, or outside the, the of the Egyptian, region, and they're living in absolute destitute. But the Egyptians poverty. basically treat uh, the, the Palestinians in Gaza uh, with disdain as well. I, I can't answer for what, how the Palestinian, how the Egyptians uh, treat them. Um, I can only say that what we're seeing is a people who are suffering, and that suffering today is empowering radicals. It is in weakening moderates. It is mobilizing actually the entire, most of the world community to begin to view these people and 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 even Hamas as as resistance fighters um, and and uh, it is diminishing it's not in Israel's interest but what should the Israelis do if, the, if, if Hamas is raining uh, rockets and missiles on southern Israel and, and a million Israeli citizens are living in terror well uh, because as I said before you have to take into account the larger context Palestinians are also living um, in, 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 uh, under deplorable conditions and uh, Israel should not use disproportionate force there should be a ceasefire it, this looks so much like 2006 where um, Israel's m use of military force achieved no um, uh, objective in Israel's interest it was a lose-lose proposition here again we see military force being used when the only solution to conflict is political and it has to be based on human rights it has to be based on international law and that is where you will find a solution but Israel will not find a solution through military force we've seen that time and time again and the violence must stop on both but, sides. But you're not, on both sides. You're not justifying no, I'm saying the, the, the rockets going into The violence into Israel. must stop on both sides. The, and the killing of innocent civilians on both sides but if, is unacceptable. If, if the Palestinians, if the Hamas, and there's a difference between Hamas and the Palestinian Authority on the West Bank of President Mahmoud Abbas, uh, they're obviously rivals right now. But if Hamas were to stop launching rockets and missiles on Israel, the Israelis wouldn't be launching any uh, military action against Palestinians in Gaza? Well, during this truce that took place, um, both sides broke the truce, actually. Um, Israel broke the truce and went into Gaza on several occasions, killed some Palestinians. The um, uh, Hamas also broke the truce, didn't kill any Israelis, but broke the truce as well. So it, it was not a perfect truce, but it was a period time during which you had a breathing space where a political process could have and should have taken off. One can't look at Gaza in isolation of what is taking place in the West Bank as well. You have to look at a political process, the outlines of which exist already today, they, they, the Clinton parameters in the last days of the Clinton administration, the Arab Peace Initiative, the, the Geneva Accord that was uh, created by statesmen from Israel and, and, and the Palestinians. These are frameworks for peace that are accepted by consensus.